I'm here at Imperial College London, the heart of the Education Institute. Um, we're here to talk about blockchain technology to around 750 students here tonight. So we feel honored and privileged to be invited down as it is London town and it's our home turf advantage. My name is Charles Story. I'm head of strategic partnerships at SVK Crypto, which is a community-driven venture capital firm based here in the city of London. We're backed by the guys at Block One, the creators of EOS, and our mandate and mission is to deploy our capital into the EOS ecosystem. I agree with your point as well, and Neil, you said something very interesting at the start was there's a huge education factor that needs to take place, and that's right. I think a lot of institutions, family offices, they want to learn more, they want to understand, they want to get in, they see this as a huge opportunity. That's what it is but they don't know how to get in. And how are they gonna do that? And they're trying to work out the risk elements of that as well. I mean, today I sat with um, an investment bank or one of the representatives from the ultra um, high net worth desk. His ultra high net worths are looking to get into this space. So they've given him the mandate to basically go out and find- my Well, you know, they're looking for series B investments, something very exciting. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I think that the capital is coming in. It's beginning to come in. It's beginning to come over the walls. People are getting, beginning to get up to speed with this revolution. And I give it 12 months before we start to see major investments coming through. Well, I think as well, blockchain is one of the rare technologies that has the ability to disrupt so many different industries. So as an investor, um, it's a great opportunity. It's limitless to the sectors that we can invest in. Um, and I think that's something that excites us most. When we say get in, are we talking about buying tokens, buying Bitcoin? Or do we mean get in by backing like Coinbase. Coinbase has received a lot of institutional capital, right? So like we are seeing institutional capital com coming into the space. We're not seeing them buying tokens, and I can agree with these guys on that, but we are seeing capital coming in. It's very obvious, it's very clear. It's strategic, it's done very smartly, but we are seeing this already. Um, I mean, I agree with you guys on the fact that BlackRock probably aren't gonna buy an ERC-20 token tomorrow because the facilities aren't in place, the infrastructure's not there. But let's not get confused, it is coming in, and it already is here. I think we have to remember as well, the regulator's job is to protect the innocent investor out there, right? And it's obviously going to take time for them to come through and to harness innovative technologies, but that's not their job. Like, their job isn't to innovate. Their job is to protect, yeah. right? So they're in defense mode, and we're in attack mode over here. So, like, they're coming through, and I think that's pretty obvious. You've got the sandbox, you've got lots of great companies coming out of the sandbox here in the UK. I think the UK in Europe is, is definitely one of the leaders when it comes to innovation, especially blockchain innovation. Um, and from the conversations we've had behind closed doors, I think it's very positive what's coming out. They don't want to, they don't want to um, stop the innovation. They're very encouraging of it, but they just take time, and we have to be able to give them that time to come through. Malta and these smaller countries, well, guess what? They have a smaller team of regulators. Like, we have a huge team here in the UK. The FCA is massive. It takes time. They're a big corporation. To turn the ship around and turn it to the other direction, it takes time. And I think that's the message that we have to wait for as well. Let's not forget, this kicked off really in 2017, yeah. right? Like, yeah, it's, it's really been a couple of years. Really like, let's give the people a bit of time here. And I think they're actually moving quick. If you look at institutions, they're moving quick. They see this asset class. They see this as a new asset class, a new investment opportunity, something they don't want to miss out on. And they are structuring products as we speak to make sure they get in. Now, there is hurdles. Yes, we're working through those. Let's be patient. Pa I'm passionate. That's what happens. I'm energetic. <laughs> Yeah, I feel the communities of Encrypto as well are so key and so welcoming to new, not only investors, but people looking to understand and learn more, right? This is not for the select few or the chosen few or the special ones out there. Everyone is welcome. From my understanding, I don't know if this is correct, this is 98% retail at this current point in time, right? What does that tell you? Well, that tells you retail was first. And this is probably one of the first instances in history that has happened. And I feel it's very easy for anyone with access to the internet to learn more about cryptocurrency and really blockchain technology and the power that it has and the power that it will develop and nurture so many different industries out there. Well, I think you have to remember, right, if you look back at the internet, the first killer application was email, right? Before that, no one really needed it or used it. And I think with blockchain, we're gonna have that as well, right? I don't know where it's gonna come from, and I'm supportive of all different protocols out there. But I think once you have that, that's gonna engage other people, then the education curve quickens, and people have an understanding and develop and add to the community.